I'd like to start off this show by saying congratulations to the winner of the first FCL First Class League Championship match. It was a fantastic match, and y'all should all go check it out at twitch.tv slash the schmodown. In the meantime, let's talk about our show. What's going on, everybody? Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m. Central Time. That means it is time for the tagline. That is the show where the tagline is the title of the show. We are the Cinefanatics. My name is Robert Adams. And my name is Chris Adams. Welcome. Right Welcome to our channel. If this is your first time here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe because you're going to like the programming that we have for you tonight. So, therefore, you're going to want to subscribe. Okay when we go live again also follow up twitter cinematics mlp how's now, it going tonight <laughs> it's going great you know what we want to first of all welcome everybody to the first ever cinefanatics subathon we're going to be on here for a week straight we uh so if you guys want to hit that sub our uh our clock that we don't have on screen we're don't, don't worry we're keeping track of it it'll continue to go up and we'll just be here for you know a week you can't do subathons on YouTube. It doesn't really work that way. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to purposely mess up the stream again tonight, and then we're all going to move over to your Twitch channel, and they'll just start a subathon automatically from there. Oh, boy. I can't tell you how much I'm not interested in doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. Uh, guys, thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for being here at the top of the show. If you have questions, comments, anything you want to send in, you want to harass us, however you want, Streamlabs.com slash Cinefanax for all your harassing needs right there. I love uh, that you suggest harassing us like they aren't going to do that anyway. I know, but I, I kind of like hint, hint, wink, wink, nod, nod. Throw some uh, numbers behind that harassment. That would be awesome. Uh, especially if y'all all want to like, you know, gather together all of the chat, the whole chat. Yeah, just anything y'all want. Yeah, send it over there. Um, <laughs> I think we could pull it off, yeah. Oh, for the uh, like subathon, yeah, but it works. It works well for the harassment thing too. So, yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> Plus, it's burning. Well, we know. We know. So, that so with this, I would dedicate twelve to twenty-four hours of my life of my time to be available for harassing y'all constantly. <laughs> I know it was for the subathon, but still, that's 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 a funny joke right there. Uh, yeah. All of the chat, they are everywhere. So yeah, streamlabs.com. You can do super chat. YouTube like super chat. We we are okay with super chat. We prefer the stream labs, but yeah. Uh and then also Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash cinefanatics. Hop on the Patreon. We've got stuff coming up, including uh, we ran a poll on our Twitch channel at uh Cinefanatics MLP on uh, not Twitch, our Twitter. On our Twitter account, I'm I'm not going to get words right tonight, y'all. We're already off to a fantastic start. In fact, yeah, so we ran a better. poll. We ran a poll as to what Fast and Furious movie we should do for our monthly Patreon watch along because uh, apparently there actually is going to be a Fast and Furious movie coming out this month. Go figure. Wow. We should have gotten it about a year and a half ago, but yeah. But we are actually going to get it. So we're going to do a watch along. Well, the results from said poll are in. And uh, everyone, actually, I don't even have the results up. I know it won. I just don't know the the actual numbers. So let me. Uh, Number let me really doesn't matter. Just quick. say who say who won. Uh, by a margin of 38%, we will be watching Fast Five, which, I mean, here's the thing. Like going into this poll, I think we kind of had like ones that we wanted to uh, that we were wanting to do a watch along with. Uh, Furious like seven, I think, is where it really starts going crazy. And if you don't believe me, go watch the uh, was it Fast and Furious seven pitch meeting that yeah. came up on Screen Rants channel. If y'all haven't watched pitch meeting, y'all gotta watch those. They're hilarious. Uh, but yeah. It, it, like you watch the movie and you're like, oh, this is an okay movie. It's it fits in with Fast and Furious. You don't really get how crazy and zany those movies are until someone else is like really nitpicking it and pushing it in your face. 
Yeah, until they introduce something called the God's Eye. Yeah, <laughs> and that's just that's just tip of that the iceberg that eventually does chase after them, like at the end of uh, Fate of the Furious, because <laughs> they go to Russia and there's ice and whatever. It's actually a submarine, but whatever. I was trying to so turn the, a phrase. That being said, we'll uh, we'll be watching fan favorite Fast Five. That was yeah. a lot of Fs. I gave a lot of Fs right there. Uh, uh, yeah, fan you favorite did. Fast Five. Uh, in time for Fast 9 to hit theaters, which we will obviously be going to the theater to see and enjoy and then be doing a review on this channel post-haste yeah. following. Yeah. Uh, that, so a heads up with this one, though. All the other times we've done like these watch-alongs, it's been movies that are typically streaming like on a major streaming platform. So it's been like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, HBO, Disney, we've, we've tried hitting it and staying within the confines of those major streaming ones. So therefore it wouldn't be any bit of a stretch for y'all our adoring public to be able to uh, get a hold of this movie to watch it with us. Uh, Fast five is not streaming anywhere. This is going to have to be a movie that if you don't own it, go rent it for this night. We're going to have a lot of fun because I know I'm going to have a lot of fun like picking this movie apart because I absolutely love this movie. So yeah. uh, my brother is going to do the same as well. But uh, we also were going off of the idea that uh, you probably own this movie anyways. So just fire up the old uh, VHS yep. player and uh, <laughs> VCR, I think is what they were called. The old, Lazy. the old does Fast Five on VHS? Did that movie no, come out during no. a time? Okay, if it is, it was made like as a joke or like a collector's item. But the last, the last new release that was released on VHS was A History of Violence. Yeah. So, uh, anyway. Garth, with the uh, the questions that everyone wants to know, what night and time that will be this coming Thursday at 9 p.m. Central, so 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. Man, Gar still has a VCR. I think I have a VCR somewhere. Probably I like know. in my storage or something. Anything I had a VCR, all VCRs, TVs with VCRs, those are all gone. I have VHS tapes still. Uh, there is a part of me that wants to go back and like collect like some of the old v like VHSs. Uh, like uh, Vernon the other day was showing off a collection of the original Ninja Turtles movies on VHS. And I hadn't even thought about it. And as soon as I saw them, I was like, oh my gosh, I want them. I want the VHS Ninja Turtle movies. So I might I, have to I, go and get that. I don't. Cause I know, I know what would happen if I had them, they would just be collecting dust and that would be it. That's the whole point of them. <laughs> but they would look good on our uh, on our other set, the bookshelf. Set. Oh, maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, so that's gonna... this that's this coming Thursday doing the the watch along. I still got Tarzan. You want me to throw that out there? <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um, we did postpone last Thursday. We were going to do the movie trivia hangout. We will postpone that. Uh, we haven't actually looked at a date yet. I'm pretty sure it will probably be. Towards the end of this month, which is going to help. Hope so. Um, possibly the 24th, the night of the 24th, maybe, because that's also the night that uh, F9 comes out. So we might go and try to see F9 that night. But so I'll tell you all what, what we'll do is off camera, we'll get a firm date and we'll let you guys know definitely by next Tuesday, because it's probably not, it's for sure not going to be this week. So. There that's what we'll a, end up doing because that's the way you do things. There was a gnat in my whiskey. I bet he's feeling good. Um. So what's what's going on? What's going on with you guys? How are y'all? How are y'all doing tonight? How's how's hey, everyone hey. in the chat? Hey guys, yeah. How's everything? How's uh, everything going? Say hi to your mothers for me. Hi, your mother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, real quick though, I do want to plug like our other shows we have coming up this week. Of course, tomorrow night we will be continuing our breakdown review of Loki. It will be episode two with Miss Kelsey Kirkland will be joining us again. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was one of probably like we've done the breakdowns for uh, WandaVision and Fat Wuss. 
Uh, the one that we did last week for Loki, we changed up the formatting of how we talk about it. Uh, we added Kelsey to the crew here to talk. It was a lot of fun. I feel like we hit like almost everything I wanted to hit. I don't. I, I feel like there was one thing I kind of wanted to touch upon after we were done, but I completely forgot what it was. So therefore, it was really wasn't important. But With Peggy Carter being in there somewhere. Apparently. Yeah, I think it was. Well, no, we. So that's the thing. We saw people in the chat during that talking about Peggy Carter, but I don't recall, and I had no idea what they were talking about. And it wasn't until like a day or two later I happened to stumble upon another like. Uh, website of like Loki Easter eggs. Did you see Peggy Carter? We're like, wait, what? So, anyways, uh, that will be tomorrow night. Also, again, uh, 9 p.m. Central Time, so 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. Loki episode oh. two. Looking forward to it. That's that means right. it's that's, coming out tonight. It's hitting tonight. I keep um, honestly, I keep forgetting these things between Loki and Bad Batch. I swear. Which means I won't be able to watch it till my lunch break tomorrow at work. Yay. Um, and then, of course, you said Bad Batch. Uh, you had to postpone your uh, Bad Batch breakdown with Adam Witt as well. So that will be this Saturday. I believe y'all are yeah. covering which episodes? Uh, we are covering episodes seven and eight. And I think, honestly, and I, I talked to Adam Witt about this. Uh, I don't have a thumbnail, so that's fine. Yeah. Uh, I talked to Adam Wood about this. We are actually going to be moving the Bad Batch to every other Saturday now and covering two episodes per week just to just because it's it's kind of weighing down for for both of us. I'll be honest with that. It's weighing down on both of us for our schedules to be able to uh, do it, do a covering a 30 minute show every single week. Uh, it just it just frees it up a lot easier and it gives us more to more to talk about in, on each episode so that we can fill out that that hour time span of talking about it a little bit easier so we will be doing episodes seven and eight this saturday i believe that timing is six pacific and nine eastern so eight o'clock our time i just got got have to try to keep remembering um we need to get back to traveling just travel across the country again let's go to la and new york and then we'll get back used to these time zones new york (laughs) new york come on in new york Schmodan contest. Uh, well, we're rem- wanting to do, and I'm changing. That reminds the tune. me. <laughs> that, that reminds me. I'm gonna ignore his uh, attempt at singing. And if you guys want to send in some stream labs, we're gonna try to get to New York in October. Oh so, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so uh, any stream labs that you can send towards that effect might be very helpful. Absolutely. Um. Where else? What else do we have? So that was all the shows. Uh, let's get into some uh, like real quick. Let's get into some personal stuff here. Uh, those of y'all, after we're done with the personal stuff, we will be talking about uh, movies that we've watched over this past week. And I know I've got a ton of them. Uh, so I want to quickly run through those as well. If y'all have any movies y'all have watched over this past week, get those ready to drop in the chat so we can ca- kind of talk about movies because it's what we do here. <laughs> so, fanatics, you know. Fanatics yeah, cinema. Go figure. Uh, so personally, uh, I would say what. Well, so we haven't been on since, like, say Tuesday last week doing tagline. Uh, since then, last was it Wednesday? You went and got the first vaccine. I have. I have gotten the first poke. The first poke. The first uh, poke. Would you, uh, wait? Would you, did, did you wuss out and go like Pfizer Club? You went through the Pfizer people right yes because i'm not a fan of blood clotting (laughs) well i absolutely love blood clotting so friday i went and got the uh i got the johnson (laughs) i got i got the johnson um yeah he did (laughs) uh so not too many like you didn't have like really any side effects other than just like the sore arm from like the, the injection site yeah, arm just got really sore that night. A little bit of sore the next day. A little bit of a headache, but I don't really even, even know if that was part of it. So it wasn't that big of a deal. <laughs> First poke for Chris. He's a man now. <laughs> All thanks to COVID. Yeah. Um, That was weird. Okay, well, we don't know what you're talking about, so. Yeah, my, uh, my AirPods are making weird... Uh, Weird noises. I thought you just got new AirPods. 
I did, but like apparently the left one's not charged and the right one is, even though they were both in the uh, the case the entire time. So that's fun. Yeah, I can't wait to go back to Apple again. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Anyway. Jinx. Um. So. What are you doing? You second one. Cat? Second one's happening at the end of the month. Uh, believe yeah. on the 30th. So that is when I will get my second. And then I believe it's supposed to be two weeks after that. You're fully vaccinated for good for goodsies. So I know with mine, like, so I got that first shot and like, I got it on the way home from work on Friday since I was off Saturday and Sunday gave me the whole weekend to kind of like just rest up. And if anything was to go wrong with it, I at least had the weekend. I didn't have to take time off work or whatnot. Um, Saturday, Saturday, I was just really tired, like all day. I think I had like maybe a slight fever for like an hour and then it went away. But otherwise, like you talked to me on Saturday, I sounded like perfect. I sounded exactly like how I sound right now. That was not a fever. We live in Texas and the apartment just got really hot. We forgot to turn (laughs) the AC down. You didn't have a fever. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's funny. So yeah, uh, no problem so far. I'm feeling perfectly fine. Arm is not really sore anymore. There's like a remnants. There's like a thought of it still being sore. By tomorrow, be 100% perfect. So that is your imagination. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so the other thing that that struck me uh, that I thought that I thought about was looking at stuff like doing this channel and expanding. I know we've got me and you have been talking about things that we want to change. Uh, a lot of it is in regards to Patreon. We're in that, uh, we're in that mood to kind of shake things up with Patreon again, pretty soon. So, uh, we might be making changes. If y'all are a part of our Patreon, even at the $1, uh, you have access to the Cine Fanatics discord. And we've asked questions about like, what do y'all think about if we do this, that, and the other, so we're still talking about those. Those we will talk about off camera. That um, is that is something great. Like if I just make the the pitch sale there on that one, uh, we will be talking to you guys on the Discord about things that we want to do with the channel. You have valuable input on the Discord uh, because we take any any uh, suggestions, anything you guys say on there to heart, and we really consider we really consider things. So uh, hop on that Discord. Anytime you're obviously you're seeing us like ask questions about that, your input is very, very valuable. So yeah, that's, that's right. $1. You give us a dollar a month. You have input on this channel. Yeah. Um, uh, I will also, since we're talking about the discord real quick, I'll call out Vernon. Uh, Vernon has added something to our discord that I'm actually like really enjoying so far. Uh, he's added this like question of the day thing. Uh, it's a lot of fun because all of a sudden I'm pulling up the discord and I see this. I'm like, I wasn't planning on thinking about this today, but now all of a sudden I am. And there were like, there was one in there. I know that was like a thinker. And I was like, I have no idea. I've never, it's such a simple question, but I've never thought about, about this. So yeah, it's, there's some good things that are hop, hop in there. Um, so hop on the Patreon, but yeah, so like we're we're trying to make <clears throat> I'm trying to lose my voice. We're trying to make changes to this channel, um, whether it's through the Patreon. Uh, I know we're we're thinking about um, changing ways of like advertising, getting people to come watch our content because that's what we're creating is content <laughs> and just pumping it out through normal things like Twitter, Instagram, whatever. They're good. But I don't think they're quite hitting where we want to hit yet. So uh, that's why, like, at the end of these episodes and shows and stuff, we talk about, like, share, uh, spread the word. Sunny. Let people's oh. Yeah. Do what? You said share. Sun, I said sun, and sunny. Share and sunny. Babe, I got you, babe. Um, anyway, so, yeah, we want to make these cha- these changes and stuff because I want this channel to grow. Uh, like, this is this is exactly what I had planned when I was a kid, I wanted to be a YouTuber. Back when I was originally born, way back in 1980. What? So, uh, yeah, this was my ultimate dream, <laughs> was to be a YouTuber. Actually, 
I think when I was a kid, I was one of those like stereotypical kids that like went through like the different ranges. Like, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a police officer. I want to be a doctor. Uh, my favorite was, I want to be a superhero. Uh, because again, like I have this connection with comics. I grew up with yeah. comics. So I was like, I always wanted to be a hero. So I wanted to, I wanted to play something real quick. When you were a kid, and I, surprisingly, we both like, you've known me your entire life and we've never really talked about this. Did you have like any aspirations to be a superhero when you were a kid? Like, I mean, there's always like the, like just playing around in your imagination. What would it be like if I had superpowers? Like I'm going to school one day. What if I, you know, had the power to do this, that, and the other, that would be a fun mm -hmm. thing. And I don't know if it's like, is it, do I keep that power a secret? Do I tell the whole world and everybody admires me for my superpower? Yeah, I mean, I played around with the idea. So, like, for example, would you want to be Superman, who has, like, literally almost every power known to the world? I mean, it's a good-looking so, guy, too. Let's be honest. Uh, he could probably use a mustache. I mean, <laughs> but would you want to be Superman, the end-all, be-all of powers? It's, it's too much power. I mean, he's strong. He's got laser vision. He's got the freezy breath. He can fly. You still Pervious. want to hold on to like some kind of like humanity and have some sort of a weakness? I don't think I can handle that much power. Just give me one. Yeah, just give me one power. Well, I mean, you could be something like, say, Spider-Man, where maybe yeah. not right now because the Spider-Man's currently in the like identity crisis panic mode. But <laughs> Spider-Man in general, <laughs> he doesn't. He has more than one power, but but I mean, yeah. like something like that. That's true. I, I like Spider-Man's power set too. It's pretty good. Uh, Thor, do you want to be a demigod? Do I want to have? Do I want to be worthy of lifting a hammer? <laughs> I like getting hammered. I mean, that's that's something different. <laughs> oh God. Oh, that's okay. Not, do not slurp whiskey like that. Oh God. That's not the a. That's not the ASMR that we need. <laughs> oh God. Also, that, that image was, was brought to you by. That image was brought to you by blockbustermallpapers.com. Uh, <laughs> this one? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Typically, I like taking those out just because I like a Whoopsies. nice clean image. Whoops. <laughs> uh, how about Thor's uh, fighting partner in crime, Iron Man? I like Iron Man. I like the idea of having a lot of money and that kind of being my power. I kind of wanted to be like Pepper Potts. I'm just admitting on stream. <laughs> you wanted to kiss Iron Man? That's weird. No, I just like red. I like having red hair. That would be cool. Anyways. Uh, okay. Yeah, another another topic. How about Wolverine? The ability to heal and having those claws and just being badass in general. Wait a minute. This is from the movie right before he gives the middle claw. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's a this is a family friendly channel so i didn't want to like do like the middle claw thing yeah. and the thing about wolverine though is that he kind of lives forever so are you okay with the idea of living forever Pretty i much. mean there's a fantastic queen song about that i mean <laughs> we can get right. pld on here and he'll talk about it all day um yeah. of course there's also like you know the fan favorite there's uh also batman which i mean here's the thing here's here's the cool thing about batman yeah. On one hand, you're rich. You have all the gadgets in the world. Like you're just an awesome, awesome crime fighting hero. Mm -hmm. And then on the other hand, you have. Never mind. Let's move on. Yeah, let's just move um, on. This yeah. Let's just yeah, moving on from this uh, conversation. Uh, so, what movies have you watched uh, this uh, over this past week? Um. So I've seen uh I've seen I've seen a few. Let me bring up my letterbox real quick. <laughs> I've got mine up already. I love letterbox, honestly. Like it helps me keep track of this this question. Like here's the thing, as this channel does get bigger, because again, I don't want to grow up to be a superhero, I wanna be a YouTuber. Um Letterbox really needs to sponsor us because that the second I really sat down and read what Letterbox does, oh my gosh, it has like completely like sorted my life. I know it's a weird thing to say, but y'all can it quote does my me on laundry, that. it cleans my dishes, takes my dog Those out for a walk. Too. <laughs> 
Someone needs to do the dishes. <laughs> Running gag. <laughs> they don't do their dishes. Uh, that's okay. You just hand wash a plate every time. Um, kind of. <laughs> anyway, no, I caught up on a few movies. Obviously, you know, we, we saw In the Heights, so that's that's a big one. We did the review for that. That is available on this channel, by the way. You can go check out our review outside of the tagline. We shot one, finally, from outside of the tagline. Which uh, is, I, had which a, I had a lot of fun with editing it too. So I've like I'm trying to expand the creativity yeah. of this channel and add like little things that hopefully hold your attention while we're talking about our feelings about a movie that we saw. Which reminds me that edit took a while, guys. And as we try to streamline that more, it's huge, huge, huge. If you guys go support the, those videos, those reviews, share them, like them, comment on them, all of that. It is. It is beyond huge because of how much uh, time is spent, you know, playing around and having some fun with the edit too. We gotta yeah. let's make it worth the time, guys. Kind of a yeah. thing. Anyway, we say in the heights, we saw that uh, two movies. Well, actually, no. There's so there's actually only one movie since last week. I think last week I talked about seeing Tokyo Drift and uh, Hitman's Bodyguard. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, this week uh, I only actually I caught to watch again. Do you have to? Um, this one, I uh, I only caught up on one new movie this week for me. I rewatched the first Fast and Furious. I know it was on our poll, and I knew we were doing the watch along for it, so I just wanted to rewatch that last night. But uh, the one new movie I caught up on was uh, Paul Thomas Anderson's Punch Drunk Love with Adam Sandler. That was a movie. Let me tell you about that one. Holy, holy, something or other. Um, I liked it. I did, but it's one of those, it's another one of those movies where Adam Sandler is playing in a dramatic role and the movie just gives you anxiety. So much anxiety. It's not as bad as uncut gems in mm -hmm. terms of like the amount of anxiety. Cause uncut gems was literally just a bunch of people like shouting over each other for the entire span of the movie as the intense situations that he finds himself in ramp up more and more and more amidst all the shouting. <sighs> This one was more of just dealing with a character who has just really bad anxiety. And then you are kind of just in his world and seeing it from his perspective. Um, but it's also a love story. So you get those moments where he's with this woman. And when he's with that woman, everything is calm for him. And it's just, it really is just a wonderful movie, especially uh, if you're looking at like finding something to give you insight into folks who have, you know, bad anxiety every now and then and kind of what, what that actually looks like. Adam Sandler was stellar in it. Holy crap. I loved it. I loved this movie, but <laughs> I was, yeah. Uh, my reviews for it up on letterbox. I, I did a pretty, pretty solid little review for it. So if you guys want to check that out, then go check out my letterboxd. Uh, you can find them at letterbox at the same place. You can find them on Twitter and Instagram, which is right there below him. It's the same exact name. Same with myself. You can find me on my letterbox at that same Robert Adams MLP. Yeah. Uh, so the thing, the thing that I thought was funny is I, st I also have not seen punch drunk love, but while you were watching punch drunk love, I was watching the Fisher King for the first time. Mm -hmm. And so we were both talking about this. This is one of the, like us talking about these two movies here in our apartment. This is one of those that like, I kind of wish this was like almost like Truman show ed TV, like where we could just have a camera on us for this YouTube channel at all times. Cause the thing that we were noticing is he would say something about punch drunk love. And I would immediately like, that's what's happening in the Fisher King. Like literally here, here's actually what we need to do. I, this would be fun. I, I think for at least it would be fun for us. I don't know if it would be fun for the audience. I think it would, but over the course of this next week, when we get some time, hopefully we have some time <laughs> for a movie. I know <laughs> we, we've got a lot loaded on within this next week. So that joke was funnier but, than the Batman one we just did. I know it was, uh, <laughs> but if we get time, let's swap these movies. You watch Fisher King and I'll watch Punch Drunk Love. That's an idea. Because what you were describing that's happening like in Punch Drunk Love, like the overall idea basis of it had a lot of similarities to Fisher King. Uh, Fisher King directed by Terry Gilliam from the Monty Python fame. 
uh, and stars Robin Williams in a fantastic role for him. Uh, yeah, I, I I saw him, Garth. I'll get to him here in just a second uh, mm-hmm. because they actually are pretty interesting. But um, the comparisons that we were making, what you were saying – like directly related to what was happening in Fisher King. And I love that comparison. I think it, we just happened to stumble upon two movies that are almost exactly alike in their root storytelling that that's what I'm saying. I want to swap these two movies. So we, I watched punch drunk. You watch Fisher King over the course of this next week. Let's come back to tagline next week and confirm like what our thoughts were of these two movies. Yeah. I don't know if I'm in the mood for another movie that gives me anxiety right now. Uh, here's the thing. I don't think Fisher King was as anxiety driven. It, only slightly because Terry Gilliam has a very distinct storytelling style outside of Monty Python. Punch a drunk Fisher. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we got a could. podcast name, folks. We got a podcast name. Punch a drunk Fisher. Yeah, one episode. And that's done. actually no. That's actually a really good idea. Let's compare like two movies, and that will be the name of the podcast: Punch a Drunk Fi- Punch a Drunk Fisher. You know, what? I don't have episode. One. That's an episode name. Mm. Yeah, we'll we'll flesh that out and uh, give all credit to uh, Garth McMurray. There, he's currently working on being the drunk Fisher. <laughs> no, I'm just stumbling over words like I normally do. You should hear me at work when I'm talking to customers. <laughs> so, uh, ma'am, I'm a sir. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, wasn't that something that happened at like at a GameStop in Albuquerque or whatever? <laughs> I was thinking that was more like a Brian Regan bit. <laughs> oh, probably. <laughs> it's ma'am. <laughs> hello, sir. It's ma'am. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. Hi. <laughs> hello, individual. How are you doing, person? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Um were you done with all the movies that you saw this past week? Yeah, you think I have time to watch more than one movie? I mean, I did. Uh, movie. Uh, so I did like Fisher King. I thought it was. I thought it was okay. Um, I did watch uh, Psycho Gorman, which I mean, the title was like a movie me. I would be interested in. It's not. No. But but so this movie was one of those like you watch the trailer for it you're like okay this looks like it might be a little fun and then you watch the movie and you're like holy crap this is a horror movie with power rangers (laughs) it is a power ranger horror movie and it is so good it is stupid it is schlocky it is fantastic and i loved it um I actually like rated it a lot lower than I feel like I actually should in hindsight. So I might change that. Uh, Other horror movies I caught up on Annabelle. I have not like deep dived into the conjuring movies. I've watched the first conjuring movie. I know the third one's on HBO max. So I need to hurry up and get to that. Um, But I watched Annabelle and eh, was not that good. Yeah. (laughs) Um, and then the other one that I watched uh, last night when coming up with the topics for tonight was Fletch. Fletch. So, yeah. Ah, no, that's Flash. <laughs> um, so I watched Fletch, the the Chevy Chase classic, and I will actually say I feel like that might be Chevy Chase's best movie. Uh, we'll yeah. talk more about Fletch here in a little bit because it is a part of our news. But uh, I'll, I'll expand upon that idea Words. later. Got yeah. it. Expand is the word you're looking for. Cool. Anyways, uh, let's get over to the stream lab. So we got Garth. Garth uh, dropped in a couple of stream labs saying, uh, going back to talking about like uh, the superhero thing that we were talking about. Uh, he said, fun fact, I'm technically a mutant. I was born with hemophilia, uh, but my mother was not a carrier, and it doesn't run on either side of the family. I'm one of the rare, it's splitting up the word here, rare mutation hemophiliacs. Although I'm the opposite of Wolverine, my healing factor is lousy. Yeah, yeah. hemophilia, uh, if, if y'all aren't familiar, it just means your your blood doesn't clot. Like when you get a cut, you get a scab. 
it mm-hmm. just it doesn't do it that well. So you're prone to profusely bleed a lot more than people who typically can have the platelets to build up scabs. Yep. Um, I was like, so I'd want I'd want to be like Wolverine with the accelerated healing factor. Adamant- adamantium bones and claws would be nice to have too, of course. Uh, but I settle for just the healing factor. Also, after you see F9, check out my rating and review on Letterbox I put up today. Garth got access to see F9 early. I know they were giving away like preview screenings to see it like super early. Um, we just don't have time. <laughs> Some of those preview screenings is like, hey, we're showing it right now. And we're like, eh, I can't do it <laughs> as much. I know I run a YouTube channel. I just can't make it real life still is involved so hopefully soon we can do um something. yeah is that what led rasputin into the russia royal family the hemophilia is that what we're talking about devlin I'm not sure um oh, one from Earth. He, yeah vernon is saying in preparation to season three of harley quinn <laughs> all the jokes that show has caused this week. I watched Killing Joke for the first time this week. Uh, so I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed the second half of that cartoon and not so much the first half. That first half is rough. So uh, I won't watch the Conjury movies, not just because I don't like most horror, but because the couple are, yeah, the Warren family. Uh, Warren, the Warren family is a real life couple that investigates like supernatural stuff and so some of it may actually be questionable like they have they have their hand in the uh, amityville horror and the haunted house of that movie that story which is based on real events so hmm. anyways interesting um let's move on to stories for tonight yep. uh so do you have some juicy box office numbers for us speaking yes of we country, do we've got- yeah, we've got some box office stuff. We can talk about the conjuring a little bit. I mean, conjuring the devil made me do it is sitting currently at a, a $10 million gross. Um, I don't believe it came out this weekend. I believe it was the weekend before that, but it also, it's also one of those that hit on HBO max too. So it's, yeah. it's got HBO max kind of up against it as well in terms of like when we're talking about box office stuff. Uh, two new ones that came out this week. Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway. Did you know that Peter Rabbit 2 was happening? That came out this week. I still haven't seen Peter Rabbit 1. Is that the one that stars uh, what's-his-face from Star Wars? No, it's... Well, yeah. Yeah, he's in that. <laughs> but also, it, it also... It's also James Corden. And so, moving on, mm. In the Heights also came out this weekend. This last weekend. Wait, and that's in the, the Heights big... came out this weekend? I had no in... idea. <laughs> right? It's not like I haven't already watched it twice. Um, it's not like I haven't touched social media at all this weekend. <laughs> some people have already seen it ten times. Um, so, In the Heights came out, and the big topic there is that they were talking about there being like a uh, $13 million take for In the Heights for the weekend. Uh, I'm currently looking at 115 but that's just domestic. I uh, don't believe that it has opened up worldwide yet. So uh, there's not numbers yet to see for a worldwide box office. But we're talking about 11.5. Yeah, I'm sure he has too. Uh, certain of that. Um, the the numbers <laughs> musical with it, Hispanic heritage. No. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but okay. Moving on. To talking about talking Alex. About. Alex is not Hispanic. Moving on. Um, so in the Heights came out. Y- yeah. Are you questioning that now? Yeah. Good job. Uh, in the Heights came out. And so people are worried about it, uh, about it uh, not performing as well. And it's that, I think people are worried about one. We're still kind of like in the, in the tail end of the pandemic side of things, but two, uh, that it also had that HBO max day and date release as well. So I think what people are questioning is that they were looking at, um, was it mama Mia when it released and it had a $20 million opening in the box office. And they're saying, you know, as comparison in terms of musicals go, 
why did this one not uh, succeed as well? And it's because I think of those two things, because, it, you know, you're looking at HBO Max, you're looking at we're coming out of a pandemic still. Uh, so my 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 thing that I really want to drive home here, the point that I want to get is go see In the Heights in the theater, you know, if you can and you feel safe, but go see In the Heights in the theater. Good Lord. This movie is worth seeing in the theater. It absolutely is. And that we want to start seeing those numbers bump up because one, if those numbers bump up, then you're looking at a, uh, you're looking at a situation where uh, we get more great musical theater, especially because I believe John M. Chu is supposed to be doing the movie version of wicked here pretty soon. We actually want to see that. We want to see that happen. And so we need to go out and support these kinds of movies. So um, you haven't you haven't even seen like the Broadway performance, whether it's like touring or on Broadway. You haven't seen that of Wicked. Well, I hadn't seen uh, that of In the Heights either. Yeah. So here's that. I've seen a stage performance of Wicked. I cannot wait for a movie version because mm-hmm. it is going to be awesome. And why it's taking this freaking long to get Wicked on a movie theater screen is insane. That movie is begging to be on a theater screen and in a a theater live production near you if you have the opportunity go see it it's awesome uh but yeah um so absolutely go see uh in the heights if you can i know like uh garth in our chat has talked about before like musicals not being his his thing and so i understand that if like you're just not interested in the genre as a whole then you're probably not going to be interested in going to see the movie I think that's what uh, hurts these is a lot of people are just not musical fans in general. Yeah. People have so, a weird, I mean, a weird thing of like people just bursting out into song and dance all of a sudden song and dance. Um, yeah. We're going to do a musical ep- episode of uh, tagline at some point in the uh, oh, far, far, no. far future. Oh no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, Vern says, was it not called Oz the Great and Powerful? No. No. No, that's a movie I don't ever want to watch again. I want to watch Wicked. It's gonna be good. Um, so on top of that, uh just you know, Cruella and Quiet Place 2 are still doing still holding strong in the box office. I mean, Quiet Place 2 international or let me say worldwide, I should say, is at 201 million right now. So domestic 111 million. Quiet Place Two is is doing well for the for the time and situation that we're in. It's doing really really well. It's also a movie that does not have a day and date release anywhere else. So your only option of being able to see Quiet Place Two right now is to go to the theater to see it. So uh, I believe all these are good signs. Um, not so much the in the heights thing, but again, we don't have we don't have the numbers. HBO Max doesn't send out the numbers in terms of how it's performing on the streaming service. I'd have to assume that it's performing well because there's a lot of good word of mouth right now on in the Heights. It's, Mm -hmm. I believe it is going to pick up legs. It's going to, we're going to see it consistently probably making that 11 million over the course of maybe the next two weeks. And I think it's going to pick up a a decent amount of, uh, of, of legs there. So that will be, it'd be good to see that one kind of pick up a little bit, but for the most part, Yeah. Uh, box office is holding strong. It's going to get stronger. And I know with fast nine, which is again, is still doing fantastic overseas. Holy crap. Is that movie doing well overseas right now? Especially for the fact that, you know, the world is still coming out of a pandemic. Um, that movie is going to be huge here. I believe that is still going to be our big, like this might be our big return to seeing movie theaters active again. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Well, uh, so Garth is saying because I looked confused, and you're absolutely right. I was. Uh, he's he is Southeast Asian Pacific Island. Yep. Okay. Well, that's cool. I, I believe he's Filipino. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to know. <laughs> uh, so moving on. Uh, so we got a bunch of other topics. Uh, there is one that. Uh, I forgot to put on this list that I did want to talk about, so I'm going to quickly, briefly talk about that. Uh, Over the course of this past week, uh, or actually, I could probably give an exact day, uh, two days ago, uh, we've lost uh, a very fine actor in Ned Beatty. 
Mm, uh, yeah. Ned Beatty is known for a lot of prominent roles. Uh, Deliverance. I I hate the fact that's the one I just led with, but uh, nice. the the famous squeal like a pig. That was him in that scene. Uh, All the President's Men, Network. Uh, my personal connection, again, superheroes, uh, was him as Otis, the sidekick to Lex Luthor in Superman 1 and 2, the original Superman movies. Uh, is back to school. He was the father of Rudy in Rudy. Uh, and then what a lot of people like nowadays connect him, uh, connect to him is the voice of Lotso Hug and Bear from uh, Toy Story 3. Uh, he passed away of natural causes at the age of 83. Uh, like uh, prayers, wishes go out to his family. Very fine actor. One who was like one of the first and foremost actors, I would say, of side characters. He, he yeah. predominantly, he was always well known for playing side characters. He never wanted to be like the focal point of a movie. He always had more enjoyment playing a side character. So. Uh, yeah, I, I I I loved his character work in the movies that he's done. It's sad to see him go, but at least we've been blessed with like really good roles from this from this gentleman. So that's and that's honestly like obviously you hate it when anyone passes away. Always, you know, it's just when someone departs from from the earth and moves on. You know, that's always really sad. But we also look at situations when someone's past their eighties. Uh, they've led a full, full life, and we we treat their death as a celebration of their life, and the, and that's the, that's the case with uh, with Ned Beatty here. I mean, we're looking at his career. You look at his filmography and everything, and the legacy of great storytelling and movies that he left behind. You know, we celebrate his life and not just mourning his death. So, yeah. Uh, Garth is saying that apparently his last name in Superman was Berg. Uh, I know there's a part where Lex Luthor's talking about being able to claim land and he wants to give Otis a piece of land and Otis is like Otis Berg in, instead of like the name of a state. But yeah, I didn't know that Berg actually was his last name in those movies. They never ac actually said, and I don't think it's credited like IMDb or anything, but yeah. yeah. Uh, great character actor. Loved him. Sad to see him go. Um, speaking of uh, great actors that have left us, uh, it was announced that John Legend is interested in producing a Bernie Mac biopic. Here's the thing: like, I love Bernie Mac. All his roles, everything he's done, uh, like great comedic actor. Yeah, he wasn't the type of actor I was like, I want to see a biopic of him. But now that this has been announced, I'm like. I want to see a biopic of him <laughs> mainly like one is because like, I know very little of the, of this man. Uh, but I, I, I absolutely love like a lot of his work that he's done. I want to see this just because I want to see what actor is going to get chosen to play Bernie Mac. Cause that's going to be hard. Who I got it. Have, who do you have in mind already? Daniel Kaluuya. Picture it. Yes. Hell yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we got John Legend on the left, Bernie Mac on the right. Yeah. Picture Daniel Kaluuya. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could see it. Mm-hmm. Good Lord, that man's got some white teeth. That must be nice. <laughs> Straight, white. Let's just... Just the best kind of teeth. Yeah. But Daniel Kaluuya as Bernie Mac, that's fantastic casting. Yeah. I don't think you could actually get like any better casting than that. Well, I mean, but, it remains to be seen. Obviously, like I'm not a casting director, so I'm not actually casting these movies. I just have a thought on it. It remains to be seen. But I yeah. just would like to also say that I thought Chadwick Boseman was going to be perfect for Black Panther, and then they actually casted him. So, you know. Yeah, Chadwick Boseman would have played Bert. Would have played Bernie Mac as well. <laughs> oh gosh, no. Oh, no. Anyways, uh, interested in that just because uh, I want to, uh, like I said, I want to see how, like, what was his life like? Uh, I know biopic yeah. movies typically they're very like we're gonna dramatize some of this, but I mean, I just want like a peek into that because that that man was amazing in all of his work. So mm -hmm. eager for that. 
Um, I have no idea how to transition this, but going back to what I was talking about with Fletch earlier. <laughs> there you go. You got um, nailed it. That works. Uh, so they've been working on doing a Fletch remake, a reboot, whatever you want to call it, for a long time. Um, at one point, Kevin Smith was was going to do a Fletch remake. And it, he had chosen to have it star either Ben Affleck or Jason Lee. I know Jason Lee was like the main focal point of it, but the studio did not want the the movie to rest on Jason Lee's shoulders because he wasn't that predominant of an actor at that time. So they all ended up passing on it. Uh, it got tossed around. It actually made its way, and you might be interested in this because I don't know if you actually know this. Well, first of all, you don't know Fletch. Uh, you haven't seen the movie. You don't um, know Fletch. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that almost sounds like a like a curse word. You don't know. Sh- you don't know Fletch. You don't uh, know Fletch. I, again, going back to the fact I just watched this last night, and I'm immediately like, this is the best Chevy Chase movie I've ever seen. Uh, yes, uh, I will be watching Fletch Lives uh, very soon because I want to see more. Uh, Fletch is a character. He's a newspaper reporter. He's very witty and he's very good at. Uh, throughout his investigative journalism, he acts as other people. And he's really good about just knowing like the surroundings around him, fitting in, and he does it like seamlessly. Um, so they're wanting to do a remake of this. Uh, what I was going to say is uh, it went from Kevin Smith that landed in the hands of Bill Lawrence. Uh, Bill Lawrence, for those of y'all not familiar, is the man who created TV shows like Spin City and our favorite TV show, Scrubs. I'm no Uh, Batman. What? (laughs) I'm no Batman. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, Anyway, so uh, at one point, Bill Lawrence was going to direct in his future film debut or directorial debut. He was going to direct this Fletch remake and uh, he was wanting to uh, stick Zach Braff in the lead role, which I mean, makes sense. I can see it. I don't yeah. I'm happy about it, but I can see it. I, I could see it. Go, like watch, watch Fletch. And then you could kind of see how Zach Braff would probably fit in there. If you're looking at like JD from scrubs into Fletch. Yeah. You could you could potentially see it. Uh, it ended up passing from from him. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head who it's going to right now, but uh, they were they announced that John Hamm has been casted as in the lead role as Fletch. Uh, the thing with this is, like looks wise, I mean Chevy Chase. For the most part, he has like a pretty serious look about him, but he he was able to be corny to <laughs> ham it up. Hmm, sorry. Uh, wow. The thing is, is like John Ham has had that serious look. I mean, you look at uh, was it Mad Men, where that image came from. He's had that serious look before, and he's able to also play cheesy, corny. Uh, look at like the stretch. What was it? Uh, his character in Baby Driver was like a far, far expanded from uh, his role on Mad Men. So, yeah, uh, I'm actually I'm I'm very interested in this. But yeah, uh, kind of like with what Garth was saying, I want to watch I want to watch Fletch Lives also. So uh, that's that could be interesting to see. If y'all haven't seen Fletch, I highly recommend it. Uh, like it's it's a PG comedy in the 80s, and I thought this is a movie that should be like easily R-rated, but there's no like real dirty humor to that movie, and it doesn't need it. Like it is like almost family friendly. Granted, like PG in the 80s, some of that was like poltergeist that should have been R. Um, but like before the PG 13, um it was it was pretty good. I, I I really liked it. I would actually, given how witty Fletch is, I would have liked to have had like maybe Ryan Reynolds, but I don't think Ryan Reynolds needs to take on another uh, franchise at this time. So, I mean, Ryan Reynolds is, is a Chevy Chase type at this point. So, yeah. 
Um, the other one I want to point out real quick before we talk about something we'll really expand on, uh, and this is me bringing this up, so you know I really don't want to. There's another Aquaman movie coming out. Apparently, this image was released that the next Aquaman movie is called And the Lost Kingdom. I, 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 I don't care. Moving on. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. I don't know what that what that really implies because I don't know like the Aquaman stories all that well. But I think yeah. it, I think you know I I enjoyed the first Aquaman. I rewatched it and I actually found that I enjoyed it even more upon the rewatch. So. It's I'm okay with it. I'm game. Well, originally there was supposed to be a movie about the trench, uh, yeah. which this was supposed to be built up as a horror movie, also directed by James Wan, horror movie extraordinaire. Um, I don't know if that's what this is talking about. The Lost Kingdom. I'm almost willing to bet that the Lost Kingdom is probably like Wakanda or something. <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm trying to make a joke in that you have Black Panther, Wakanda Forever that's going to talk about Atlantis in its sequel. Well, here's a sequel about Atlantis over at DC the, talking about the Lost Kingdom that I would have to assume is something a lot like Wakanda. It would make sense. It would be absolutely hysterical if that's true. So Just, just the funniest thing. Just, it would just be the funniest thing. Yeah, and Garth wants Aqualad. Of course you do, Garth. Aqualad's real name is Garth. Yeah. In case, in case y'all didn't make that connection. In case, in case, yeah. In case you, no one else is a, a <laughs> comic book nerd like me and Garth. And Garth, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is a big one. This one actually dropped today. Uh, we got a the first look of Jane... Uh, in Love and Thunder. Uh, okay, kind of a stretch. It's Natalie Portman's role as Jane. Uh, the Mighty Thor. Yeah, Love and Thunder <laughs> is covering a storyline from the Thor comics where uh, Jane Foster, uh, she gets cancer, and uh, Thor gives up the role of Thor and Jane herself uh, becomes worthy of the hammer. She's able to pick up Mjolnir, and so she yeah, becomes meow meow. She becomes the new Thor. So uh, the fun thing about this is when this comic was originally released, there was like a good eight issues about this female Thor, and no one knew who it was. Like even even like Thor, uh, who went by the name Odison in the comics at that time, because this female Thor was actually Thor. Uh, he was trying to guess who the female Thor could be. And no one knew until like the, like the end of the eight issue stretch uh, where we saw like the cancer ridden Jane Foster mm -hmm. with the hammer. Yeah. Um, so there's a huge storyline there. I'm not going to go into it because they might touch upon it in the movie and I don't want to like really spoil it too much. Uh, but we knew that this was going to be the female Thor in Love and Thunder. While Thor Odison is off with the Guardians of the Galaxy having adventures and whatnot. Uh, yeah. But so they released this t-shirt. Looks like a production t-shirt, but it has this shot of looks like Thor and Valkyrie. But then also you have the Jane Foster Thor. So this is our first look as to what the Jane Foster version of Thor could mm. potentially look like the general uh, which, design. Yeah. Which I mean, yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Don't look too far off. Uh, so I'm kind of hoping, I'm kind of hoping that, it, that that is how it's going to look. That they will play the same way that the comic the comic story played. Just I think the truth is it's the, really the, good. The truth is is that we can all imagine what she's going to look like in the movie. I mean, we've seen Thor's costumes. We just picture Natalie Portman in a Thor like mm -hmm. costume, and you've pretty much got what's what she's going to look like. So, yeah. 
Uh, anyways, so that was the first nice like little tease that we've gotten so far. I know that's a big one that everyone wants to see, much like we all are waited with waiting with bated breath for the next uh, Spider-Man trailer, which should be happening like any day now. So uh, be on the lookout for that trailer reaction to drop on this channel the second we're able to get to it. Which means later uh, that evening. <laughs> which generally means later that evening. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Jessica Henwick. The, uh, this will be our lead, uh, story from the thumbnail. Jessica Henwick, uh, has signed on to the matrix four along with Christina Ricci. So, uh, she's, she's got a good franchise that she's a part of. She yeah. just, it was recently announced. She's going to be joining the all-star cast of knives out Two. This cast is insane, and I cannot wait for this movie. Knives yeah. Out 1 was fantastic, and again, we, we covered this a couple of weeks ago, talking about Knives Out 2. Um, adding Jessica Henwick, this is a person who is at the very cusp of like a major breakthrough, and she's going to be deserving of everything she could get in she's regards to this breakthrough. She's fantastic. She's actually a really great actress, and uh, I'm actually really excited to see her be a part of this. I know that she's been doing a couple like uh, lesser known movies lately. Some of them probably like titles that most people wouldn't recognize. The biggest movie she's been in lately was uh, that movie Underwater. It was kind of like a, a horror movie, mm -hmm. horror esque, sci fi esque movie with uh, I believe Kristen Stewart being the lead in that. So there's. That one was largely panned, I think, by most like critics. I don't know. I think audiences probably weren't too happy with it either. That was also uh, a movie that they were trying to force out during the pandemic. So yeah, it also was like yeah, coming on the brunt of like the beginning of the pandemic and everything, or happening during the pandemic. So it's kind of it was one of those like eh, this is this is probably just gonna. But Jessica Henwick actually got her biggest start yet from that Iron Fist TV show that Netflix put out in regards to, along with uh, Daredevil and and Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and all that and Defenders. Mm -hmm. uh, she was probably one of the like highlights of that show. I believe her character and, and what she was doing in that show was one of the best aspects of that entire that entire show in general. Uh, so she she's just someone that I believe needs to just hit that one role and then boom she's gonna be a fantastic star well, i'm excited that she's she's in these two movies though i would say being in matrix matrix four and knives out two definitely that's it that's gonna put her in a position where she could i mean you look at uh the first knives out movie look what it mm -hmm. did for anna de armas like all of a sudden anna de armas like star and Essentially, like I saw her back, like in uh, was it Knock Knock from Eli Roth with Keanu Reeves? Eh, kind of a whatever movie. Uh, she wasn't like really a huge standout in that, it was really all about Keanu Reeves and how these two girls are treating him. Yeah, I'm not gonna go into details, <laughs> please, please don't. but yeah, uh, but she was one of the two girls, but I mean, that really wasn't like a focal point knockout uh i think knives out and then her role in uh blade runner 2049 i think the two of those kind of coming out i think they came out pretty close to each other actually uh that's what really helped push her in yeah. into limelight they were within like uh, two years so, of each other yeah so something like doing matrix four and knives out two uh that's i feel like it's going to be a big deal for uh for jessica henwick and yeah. I'm eager to see her in more movies. What's... Yeah. Like, hmm. It's a, it's a good picture there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> relax. Relax. I, I'm, I'm relaxed. Just, uh, I like looking at good pictures. So I'm just saying. <laughs> so I think what I'm actually like most uh, excited about for her here is that these these are two these are going to be two prominent roles that are just going to uh, 
that, like we said, are going to like jumpstart a career into like superstardom for the thing that I think is interesting is I think it's actually knives out too. That'll probably end up doing it more than matrix four. And I say that because right now with matrix four, I'm getting some solid, uh, later year Terminator movie vibes about the entire production and, and potential for that story, especially because they're making a fourth matrix. Um, so I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't think that movie is going to be like the big one to hinge your career off of or to, to hang it off of. I mm-hmm. believe Knives Out 2 with Ryan Johnson still being in complete control over that and what happens in it and the story he wants to tell and just the whole vision he has, I think, for that franchise, I think is going to be the one that you kind of go, hey, look at this. Look what I look at what I did over here. I don't know if she's going to be in like a just in a. I almost said her name and said, I don't know if she's going to be in like an Ana de Armas type role in the movie or yeah. what we don't even know what the story looks like yet in regards to into the mystery that Benoit Blanc is trying to solve this time. So she could end up being the villain of the movie. Like, uh, like what, what, what's his face over in the, the, the other movie? Uh, the first one I'm not, I'm trying, I, I, I started talking and I didn't want to like give away things about that movie. So I, I know who it is. I just want to. <laughs> yeah. Look, if you haven't so, seen knives out one by this point, <laughs> go watch it. Anyway. Uh, so I'm hoping that, you know, she has some kind of like really good prominent role in knives out Two Ooh. in some capacity. I hope it's like a starring role for her too. Yeah. But um, yeah, <laughs> that's, I was going to say it's, that's our uh, lead topic because none of these topics this week were kind of like really like deep dive. Let's talk into the, all the inner workings of this new story type, uh, t- type of situation. So <laughs> I was close with like the, uh, the Jane on the t-shirt, like you guys want to see a t-shirt? Look at the t-shirt. There's a picture on the t-shirt. Like I was almost wanting to do that, but I'm not in the mood to like uh hot merchandise yet. So <laughs> We, so don't if you go cine- to, uh, we don't have to. We don't have Cine Fanatics at T Public or anything. You go to tpublic.com slash Cine Fanatics. You'll find absolutely you, nothing because that nothing. doesn't exist. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the Chris is a spoiler. Congrats on your match today. Thanks. Hey, you know what, Garth? Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Look, if other people can rise the ranks of the FCL by not actually rising the ranks of the FCL and they didn't get a title belt, I sure as hell can do it too. I would love. Here, here's the thing: like completely outside of like kayfabe of uh, movie trivia competition. Yeah, I know. What's kayfabe? Uh, exactly. Uh, I would love it if like one of us got the belt, and then the other one of us had to challenge or work their way up to fighting for the belt, like a number one contender match. And then when the other person wins we film like a video of like the handoff of the belt. And it, all it is, is us coming out of our bedrooms, going out to like the kitchen, like, Hey, here's the belt. Would you like some eggs? I could cook real quick. <laughs> like that would be funny. <laughs> Just a thought. <laughs> so I'll write the next cut scene that we shoot. Um... Uh, <laughs> that reminds me. And, uh, Guys, y'all might want to hop. Y'all might want to hop on the uh, Patreon because uh, <laughs> there might be uh, other benefits coming pretty soon, uh, so yeah, to speak. Don't know what he's talking about. Don't know what he's talking yeah. about. Anyway. Yeah, you do. Anyways. <laughs> Not a clue. Um, so, yeah, that's. I think that almost pretty much wraps it up, guys. If you have any other like final questions, any other final thoughts you want to send in, I'll check the Streamlabs again. There's nothing there. Okay. If you have any other thoughts or questions you want to like, send in. I'm going to check it real quick. Nope. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing there. Uh, Just, feel free to do so, y'all. Uh, we really appreciate all the support. We really appreciate questions and, and stuff too. But yeah, do you yeah. do you want to know anything yeah. about us? Like, what kind of beard oil do I use on this glorious facial hair? I actually got the haircut the other day, and they didn't. Water. They were like, "You don't have to wear a mask. We could trim your your facial hair." I was like, "Well, I just got the." the vaccine so it hasn't been two weeks yet but if y'all would like to like maybe cut around the mask type of thing they're like cool i'm looking cool story bro 
I'm looking forward to not having to wear the mask anymore. I really am. The second yeah. I'm fully vaccinated, that thing is donezo. Now, yeah. here's the sad part is that means I am susceptible to a cold again. Yeah. Like Dang how it. many people how many people have not gotten a cold this year at all? <laughs> Most people. Like typically like I don't get sick very often, but there's times where I just don't feel good. Really didn't have that this past year at all. Like so other I know. than like I felt bad like th- I had some kind of weird cold at the beginning of the pandemic but that was about it. Y'all might recall like a year over a year ago where I had a hard time talking. We I think we had to skip like a couple of tagline episodes cuz I just felt like crap. But yeah, and then I got sick after you. And then you got sick after me. Yeah. We're pretty sure that wasn't COVID. I uh, not probably not but not exactly sure what it was. So it was weird. It didn't affect us like COVID affects people. It was just like a normal cold. But either way, uh, we'll find out when I get my uh, second dose of the vaccine. If I don't have any problems, then maybe I already had COVID. Who knows? I don't know if that's how that works. I, I'm not a scientist. I've just told take the vaccine and and be done with it. So that's, that's we're not happened. scientists. We just talk about movies on the internet. Can't wait for a movie about that to come out. We're not even really professional at doing that yet. So. Hey, you know. <laughs> What are you gonna do? But but y'all can help us be professional at that by liking, commenting, and subscribing to the Cinefanatics channel. Also, make sure you share this. Do y'all have anything else y'all want to talk about? Drop that in real quick as we get these plugs in. Again, patreon.com slash cinefanatics. Cool things coming, including our watch along of Fast Five is gonna be Thursday at 9 p.m. Central Time. That's 7 Pacific and 10 Eastern. We will be doing the watch along of Fast Five. It's gonna be <laughs> a lot of fun. You could go to the Science Fanatics YouTube channel and subscribe, whoever the science fanatics are. That's not us. Uh, well, I mean, that might be us next week. I don't know. Yeah, I was gonna say we, we might be doing something sciencey next week. <laughs> we, uh, so- we might Let's not let's not fully announce that, but we'll, we'll drop the hint. There might be some science going on with us uh, next week. Make sure you follow us at Cinefanex. Yeah, kind of <laughs> at Cinefanex MLP on Twitter. Uh, you will get all of the uh, all, all all of the lowdown on that. Uh, real quick, we did have all of the chat uh, dropped in a a stream lab saying Robert uses Smilex beauty products. Yeah, I do. I smile like all the time. I don't smile like ever. Only when the camera turns on do I give you all a smile. So, yeah, yeah. You you know what the Smilex products are, right? <clears throat> sure. For the sake of this stream that we're doing right now, it is the chemical combination that Joker creates in oh, the yeah. eight, eighty-nine Batman. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, that's right. That's right. I understood I should, I should that, that reference. Again. I should, I it's, really it's actually pretty good. Yeah. I know it's pretty good. I've seen it. I just should watch it again. <laughs> um anyways. Oh. Yeah, if I need a smile more, there's always joke gas. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put a smile on that face. Joker was a clever chemist. Video Drew hates that. Yeah. I remember uh they did the uh video chronic quiz over that, and uh video drew just hated talking about that Joker was a chemist. So <laughs> um anyway so patreon.com there's the fast five watch along on thursday probably the following thursday in, uh, unless something else changes which we'll announce um we'll probably do the patreon uh the patreon movie trivia thing yeah yeah just stay tuned for that information guys we'll, we'll let you know yeah uh, i'm not making that solid just to be determined off camera um upcoming shows tomorrow night will be loki episode two i cannot wait for that i don't want to hit my desk too hard because the microphone's here yeah that's what it sounds like when you hit it really hard uh so yeah loki episode two will be tomorrow night we had a lot of fun last week we're going to have a lot more fun tomorrow i guarantee it uh so uh come back for that tomorrow night 7 p.m uh pacific time uh 10 Eastern. Yep. Like I said um, earlier, also Bad Batch this Saturday, breakdown for episode seven and eight with Adam Witt. Uh, I believe he's going to be out of town, so he's going to have to be doing it from a hotel room, I believe. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Like we've never done that before. <laughs> or we've at least tried before. 
we filmed things from a hotel room a couple of times. Oh, filming, yeah, I mean, live streaming. That's what I'm talking about. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And there's something else going on. Oh yeah, guys, guys, guys. Go uh, oh, yeah, Twitch. Yeah, yeah. Twi Twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. I recently, as when I say recently, I mean literally just today, started my first playthrough of Pokemon Shield. That is the latest of the uh, main series in that game. I haven't played it, even though I grew up on this series and like played each main series all the time. For some reason, it's taken me this long to get into this one. I've started my first playthrough on it. It's fun so far. I've enjoyed it. Garth made jokes in the chat all the time, the, the entire time I was streaming. It was the blast. You guys should definitely come hang out. Uh, right now, I'm typically for sure trying to stream on Tuesdays just because it's easy to stream and then raid over to the Schmodown for the FCL. But uh, it is kind of spotty for me right now because there's things that I am working on, things that I'm trying to prepare with outside of anything that we do Cinefanatics wise. Uh, but also things that we are trying to do Cinefanatics wise and, you know, FCL and all that, everything kind of makes it hard to jump in and, and do that. But there will be a moment in time coming up soon as I get my schedule kind of aligned and what I want to do that I will be streaming more often. So if you are not already following me over at twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP, I would greatly appreciate a follow. If you want to drop a sub, feel free to do so. I know it's a $5 ask, but it gets you that, the, the notifications it just it just helps me out honestly it, it's there's there's not a whole lot extra that it really gets you right now because i'm still kind of working on some things over there but it, it it helps me out so it's it's barely an ask right now for me to give because i don't have a good pitch for it but anyway i appreciate all the support do you like him subscribe to him wait i'm related to you and i don't subscribe to you no i think you have a gifted sub i think someone gifted you a sub so oh yeah that's right <clears throat> I also gift you like money in general anyways. <laughs> so sure. We cut the, the middleman out. <laughs> anyways, <Right>. yeah. <laughs> make sure y'all subscribe over there. Help him out for that. Uh, Pokemon shield where you are Nick Fury recruiting Pokemon. <laughs> You'll get your, uh, your Pikachus, your Charizards. You won't recruit any Flurkins though. Nick Fury doesn't like you recruiting Flurkins. No meows. No meows. <laughs> it just reminds you too much of a flurkin. Anyways, I've had a flurkin good time tonight. How about you, Chris? Has it been flurkin amazing for you? I told you I gave so many Fs earlier. I'm just all out of Fs. You're all out of Fs. I'm so lost without you. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for tonight's episode before we just get like way too zany and we don't know how to handle ourselves too late. I'm uh, loopy without alcohol. I know. I know you are. I, that's why I have to, so I can measure and keep up hydrate. with the zan the zaniness of this potential channel. Uh, guys, hydrate. yeah. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for watching. Thank y'all for being here from this. I'm hoping this was good and entertaining for you. If you like this, make sure you drop us a like. That's that thumbs up there. Don't hit the thumbs down. That's not a like. Just saying. In case y'all didn't know normal human hand You gestures. can also subscribe and leave a comment once this video is done. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, comments always help us. Uh, we might look back at the comments, and if there's something interesting, we might bring it up in the next episode. So feel free to do that once the show is done. I know comments aren't available right now, but there you go. And again, share, share, let people share. know you watch us. Let people know you're interested in watching us. That's how we know this channel. Okay. <laughs> share, share this with everybody. Share the love that is the Cine fanatics anyways. And again, subscribe. That's the big thing that YouTube likes us to say. So therefore we say it, subscribe, hit that bell. So you know, when we go live and when we have videos that pop up and you'll be camera. foremost. Yeah, you are. You'll be the okay. first and foremost to know about it. Anyways, that's going to do it for tonight. So for myself, for my brother, you can find us at the addresses down below at Twitter and Instagram and Letterbox. as if. As for us, it's been a great night. Y'all have a great
Good night. Later.